you probably heard the term carbon tax used yes. a lot recently. Yep. Do you understand what carbon pricing or a carbon tax is? <laughs> a little bit. Not entirely. I couldn't explain it to you. I can't really say for sure. I'm not quite sure to be quite honest. Uh, do I understand what a carbon tax is? I'd like to understand a lot more than I do. It's a political football that in recent days has been kicked around more than a pigskin on Sunday. I'm Adrian Gobrio. We have guests tonight. We're talking about the carbon tax. It's also called carbon pricing, pollution pricing. It's called many things. It's also been called a cash grab or essential to our planet's survival. Now, pushing the politics aside, everyone we spoke to today either knew very little or wanted to know more about this new thing that we're each going to have to fork over more for in the new year. How do you think it's been explained to the general public what it actually is when it comes to carbon pricing and, and carbon tax? Yeah, it hasn't been explained as well as it could have been. Some people think it's going to be this monster. We do, we do need to do a better job educating people on what it means. When you drive your car, when you heat your home, you produce carbon. And up to now, that's been free. That carbon pollution has been free. And now the government's saying, we have to pay a price for that carbon pollution. It's an incentive to pollute less. The average household in the new year will be spending about $240 on the new carbon pricing model, though you'll receive a rebate of about $300. Now, when carbon pricing hits its max, we're told in about 2022, the average household will be forking over about $570 each year, though you'll receive a rebate of 700 bucks. Paying more for our, our pollution, right. and then they're giving us the money back. Is this just a, a, a needless circle? Is there actually a point to this, and can we actually do something to help the environment? Yes, it does help the environment because it's an incentive to pollute less. So if you pollute less, if you drive a smaller car, if you drive an electric car, or you keep your house a little cooler at night, you'll keep more of that rebate. More money in your pocket. Exactly, more money in your pocket if you produce less pollution. Is it uh, realistic that it could help uh, you know, bring down carbon emissions drastically in the time that's needed? It certainly can help. And if you look at other parts of the world, it has helped. When you price something, people use less of it. If you price pollution, people make less pollution. So yes, it will reduce carbon emissions. If you look at the World Bank, if you look at the OECD, if you look at Nobel Prize winning economists, they're all saying we need to price carbon. It's also intended to curb the emissions of big industry. The less carbon they spew into the atmosphere, the less carbon tax big industry will have to pay. Now, countries like Germany have launched carbon pricing, and according to experts, it has reduced emissions. Now, one place you will feel the pinch of a carbon tax right here at the pumps. Now, in 2022, as I mentioned, we'll see carbon pricing hit its peak about $50 a ton. So what does that mean to you? Well, that'll mean you'll pay about 11 cents more per liter here at the gas station. Again, it's meant to curb consumer trends, the way we drive, forcing people to think second or think twice rather before they get into their vehicle or perhaps buy a greener vehicle.